Hello YouTubers, this is your friendly neighborhood Theophage. So far, I've been defending the second premise of the argument from suffering against the existence of God. I plan to continue doing so in this video, but let's go back and talk a little bit about premise one. It states, if God exists, he is omnipotent and omnibenevolent. Omnipotence means being able to do anything except that which is logically impossible to do. Omnibenevolence means wanting the greatest possible good. Since there is apparently no one else watching my videos as of yet, or at least caring enough to respond, my sole opponent has been the YouTuber Evangelical One. He is a Christian, thus he presumably believes in an omnipotent and omnibenevolent God. But his responses to me don't quite match up with that idea. Regarding my example of suffering coming from earthquakes, Evangelical One in his most recent video response said, Now what if there weren't earthquakes? Maybe earthquakes are somehow a necessary precondition of life. And by earthquakes, he explains he means the whole tectonic activity caused by a hot interior with a mobile crust on top, where earthquakes come from. Now, I get the point of his hypothetical here, but he doesn't seem to get that his point actually denies the omnipotence of his deity. If God created everything, including all the laws of physics and chemistry, then nothing is a necessary precondition of life except that which God decides is necessary. He makes the rules. He can have it any way he wants. God does not have to create a world where suffering exists unless he specifically wants suffering to exist. And of course, if God specifically wants suffering to exist, then he is not omnibenevolent. Again, Evangelical One says, in this scenario, what options are available to God? He has two and only two options. One, he abstains from creating life. Or two, he creates life, which is subject, in principle, to the pitfalls of earthquakes. No matter how omnibenevolent or omnipotent he is, there is simply no other option available to him. No. No, 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 no. It would seem that Evangelical One does not even begin to understand what omnipotence entails. It seems like he's saying, well, here are the immutable laws of the universe, which not even God himself can violate. So he has to do what he can to get the job done. I'm sorry, but that is nowhere near what omnipotence entails. Omnipotence means that God can bring about anything or state of affairs unless that thing is logically impossible. Logically impossible things are self-contradictory. God can't make a square circle or a married bachelor because the properties of those things contradict themselves. There's nothing logically impossible about a world in which there is free will and sin but no suffering. Nothing. If you dispute this, please show where the self-contradiction lies. You say God cannot manifest such a world, but if he cannot, he is not omnipotent. Evangelical 1. If you want to agree that God is not omnipotent, then we can stop this right here and now. The argument from suffering has absolutely nothing to say about the existence of a non-omnipotent God. But if you want to continue to claim that God is omnipotent, then you've got to show how life and free will is logically impossible without suffering. Not just that it violates the laws of physics or even the laws of God himself, but that it actually leads to a logical contradiction. You didn't do that here, you haven't done that yet, and I don't believe that you can do it at all, because it's not logically contradictory. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I missed it. I'm certainly open to that possibility. But maybe you're wrong. I think the evidence of what is presented determines that for us. I await your next response, where hopefully all will be revealed. Thanks.